4 a.m. and it's hot. It's got us. It's done a number. It's just like a tidal wave. Just all the way up there. There's been about two or three of them. Uh. Scenes of maim and carnage last night. About 4 a.m. We woke up with a wave about this high around us. Tent floating, water pouring in. And yeah, it surged all the way up to the back here. My shoes ended up down the other side of the beach. And yeah, you know, I'm just finding, oh, you know, here's my spoon. Excellent. Uh, so far away now, but um, on the plus side, today's also the first, the second day in the past 11 we've woken up after 7 o'clock. So, it's been quite nice. Just staying still, nowhere urgent to be today. Just gonna recover from the chaos of this tsunami. Yeah. Second last day, hard to believe. And we've got about maybe 12 k's or so today, which will be hard enough because uh, it's getting windy and it's gonna be quite the headwind. So we're just gonna trudge along. We set, our, we set ourselves up to only have to do small distances into this headwind so we can actually make it to the car. It'd be a shame to be so close and not make it. So yeah, we've recovered from the great tsunami. It's quite late, it's 10.40 in fact. This is slow, drying things out again, but it's fine. We've got all day to do 12 days. Yeah, it's so salty. Yeah. to do 30 k's today and with this wind you'd just be feeling horrendous and deflated so because it's only 12 it's like ah we can just plod along oh well, that tide's gonna change soon and that'll that'll help the tide will be running along the coast just feels like you're paddling through some mint in other videos but it's no longer about distance for me it's, it's more about how long it takes that day 12 k's can still take four hours and in four hours on a really nice day you know you could do 32 k's so it's all just about how long it takes because that generally indicates how tired you get. Oh, that is amazing. One hour down, four and a half k's into this wind, which is you know, actually not too bad. It doesn't look windy in here because we. The great thing about the north coast is we've got all these coves we can duck into to get some rest and reprieve from the wind, and then we go around the corner and 
back out into the fray. Certainly not far from the end now, I mean, right out there you can see Cape Cassini, maybe Cape Dutton, something along those lines. Oh yeah, getting there. We're almost not going forward anymore. Oh, dickens. Ah, hope it ends. by far the strongest wind I've ever paddled in. Certainly don't do it by choice. Some 30 to 35 knot gusts and just gets to the point where you're virtually not even going forwards anymore and you're just struggling to not go backwards. Finally found a little cove out of it. Here's Western River. No one's enjoying the beach today, but except Malcolm. Blowing a gale to try and get in here, it's tough. Might make some decisions about whether we stay here tonight or just even wrap it up today. Over ourselves. So. Well, we decided to stop here in Western River. Still only eight k's to go, but it's gonna be nastier this afternoon than it is tomorrow morning. So we thought, yeah, we'll just enjoy the afternoon here. Stop being so busy. And then actually reflect on the trip. Head out tomorrow into more wind, but then we'll be done. Yeah, sensational. Hiding up in this cave. It's just so damn windy, sand going everywhere. Uh, last night, haven't set the tent up yet, just in case someone gets offended that we're camping on a beach, which has happened. Happened too often? Yep. So, we'll wait till after dinner. But, right, what have we got here? Some kind of leftover spaghetti bolognese. Mmm. Plant-based meat thing. <laughs> no. well, I guess all meat is plant-based if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real meat. <laughs> yeah. Don't actually know what it's made of. Plants. But yeah, just trying to soak in the trip. It's a little bit of a blur. 
But yeah, be good when we get home. Be able to soak it all back in and especially when I make these videos. Then I get to really reflect on everything that happened as I relive it. So. Just the 8Ks to Snellings tomorrow. Then we're off to Penishaw, the Caravan Park and the pub. We had a bit of a scare. We got a missed call from Sea Link, the ferry people, saying that our ferry has been put in for unscheduled maintenance. It's broken. <laughs> it's broken. It sunk. Back. And we're like, well, does that mean when do we get to go home? But then it turned out it's only an hour later. So that's all right. Catch the eight o'clock ferry instead of the seven o'clock. That's fine. I've touched hands with those who touched me. Seen the marks of skeleton keys. Here we go, after well, it's our 12th day, it's our final morning and we just got this western river to Snellings, 8 k's then we can finally prove once and for all Kangaroo Island is in fact an island <laughs> We'll see Tiny little bit of skepticism But yeah Horribly windy last night, lots of sand in the tent so we'll be glad to be rid of the sand. So yeah, we'll have to do battle with the wind again. This eight guys won't come easily, but hopefully two to three hours. And uh, we'll have done it. Finished KI. They don't look massive these waves, but they will certainly cause us some havoc if we get it wrong. Very dumpy. You've made about a foot. Surely. Here we go. You can see familiar territory now. Cape Dutton and then King George Beach. And then around this little corner in there. It's Snellings, the end. So it's meant to be southeasterly winds today. And we can see that. Yeah. That's almost east northeast. What happens with the wind is it comes over the land and then it just finds it easier to follow along the coast than keep crossing over so it just turns into this brutal headwind even though you think you know it might not be too bad protected but no it just funnels straight along the coast we've got the double whammy today of headwind and family against a pretty strong tide we're five k's down three to go and even though it's only an 8k i think you know, it's too hard slogging against the tide and the wind. We're so close now. I think that's all that's keeping her going is that we are close. So there's some pretty bits along here, but I wouldn't say the last 5 k's have been that spectacular. Oh boy. <laughs> 
get sucked over that little rock ledge. Thank you to everyone who donated to the fundraiser. Last time I checked, we were over $2,300 raised for Operation Flinders to help our young people with challenging and difficult backgrounds and stories. So just thank you so much again. Yeah, thank you. Oh man, it's as if the island's just throwing one more challenge at us, one more question. I want this. Close and a 25 30 knot gust. Just thanks, just nuts. Oh, it's costly to stop and film. Oh, it's like the windiest of the entire day, nearly the entire trip, and right now. So guys, here she goes, the end. Whew. As Dana lands, she'll be the third woman that we're aware of to have ever completed paddling around the island. So that's epic. That's really awesome. And could be the youngest, depending on how old Kim Petrick was when she did it. Right her up. Let's go. That is. Ah. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Congratulations. Well done. Oh, okay. <laughs> right here. That's pointing at you. Yeah. We'll make her do it again, she says. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's pretty good. Oh, thank you. There you go. I feel like you should say something uh, special about the all I can think of is it's buddy done. We did it. Thank you for all the money raised. Thank you.